Hey, don't listen to the haters. Raise that banner on Sunday. Let's go. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And what's good, everybody? Matt Derry with you. It is a Friday edition of Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day of Friday, January 5th into Saturday, January 6th. We have just two days left before week 18 gets going on Sunday. A lot of games that matter, a lot of games that don't matter. Lions game is kind of in the middle as Detroit will host the Minnesota Vikings coming up at Ford Field at 1 o'clock. We'll get to the pregame ceremony uh, ceremony the championship recognition that the Lions are calling it. And I've seen some haters on social media saying, banner celebration, we shouldn't do that. Let, let me get into that coming up momentarily here on Lockdown Lions. Also, we got to get into an update on James Houston, the Pro Bowl snubs, a snub, big one with Amon Ross St. Brown, injuries, much, much more. It's a Friday edition of Lockdown Lions. Again, Matt Derry with you. Thanks for making us your first listen, checking us out wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you for subscribing, those of you that do, on our Locked On Lions YouTube channel. Locked On Lions today brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. A shout out to our everydayers who either watch the podcast on YouTube or listen to us wherever you get your podcasts each and every day. That includes my main man, Jake Wolock. Congrats to Jake, who got married a couple of months ago. I hadn't really uh, 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 talked to Jake in a while, but we were texting the other day, and he watches the show, and we appreciate Jake's viewership. And uh, he's a great, great Lions fan, big Michigan fan, Oakland U guy. Congrats to Jake. He's one of our everydayers. Uh, another one, Drew Nickel. Yeah, Caribou Drew. He's like down and out after foot surgery. Drew, shout out to you. Lions free Chris Druin. Yes, LFCD. And his main man and our main man, Anthony DeLuca. Thanks, guys, for checking out the pod each and every day. All right. I, I just figured that we would be, all be in a good mood. Lions have won the division. Yes, we're past what took place last Saturday. I don't want to talk about it. Lions are playing the Vikings on Sunday. And the team has already raised its 2023 NFC North banner both inside the facility down at 222 and also uh, uh, at Ford Field. But the organization has announced to the fans, get to the stadium early, try to get in your seat around 1240. They are going to do a championship recognition and either, I don't know, shine a light on the banner and get make it all dark or raise it back up. Whatever they're doing, the Lions are going to celebrate at 1240 Sunday, 20 minutes before kickoff that they're raising a banner at Ford Field. Saw this on the old social medias. By the way, follow me on Twitter at Dairy Speaks, at Locked on Lions on Twitter, on threads at The Real Matt Dairy, and the Matt Dairy Facebook fan page. So I I saw some people going, why are we raising a, why are we doing a ceremony? We haven't won the division in 30 years. You know, they should only do it if you win the Super Bowl or you win or you go to the Super Bowl. Please, can we stop with this? The Lions are doing something cool on Sunday, 20 minutes before the game, and I have no issue with it. They have not won the division in 30 years. 30! They've never won the division, nor have even sniffed the division, since they moved downtown from the Silverdome to Ford Field. Why does everybody have to be negative? All right, I'm staying positive today. The Lions, 100%, absolutely should raise the banner. They they already have an NFC Central banner that's up there. They should 100% have a new banner that says NFC North 2023, and they should absolutely celebrate it at 1240 on Sunday. What this operation has done down in Allen Park over these last three years, (coughs) excuse me, has been pretty special. It's been pretty darn good. A three-win team questioning the coach, Is he just a meathead or can he actually coach to nine wins last year? And what an unbelievable week 18 win that was at Green Bay. Um, Keeping the Packers out of the playoffs and ending Aaron Rodgers' career in Green Bay, which was just awesome. 
because Aaron Rodgers just continues to be uh, a loser uh, off the at least off the field. If anybody caught his uh, routine on Pat McAfee the other day, I hope he gets sued. Um, and then this year, eleven wins could be twelve by 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 four o'clock on Sunday, and winning a division. And I have no problem with the Lions celebrating this and telling the fans, hey, look, we're doing something cool on Sunday at 1240. They're calling it championship recognition. I have no issue with that. I don't know what the plan is. I don't know if Sheila's going to be down there or Calvin or Barry or, you know, any of those people. But, like, I think it's cool. I think it's okay to celebrate this. All right? Now, what you hope is, is that over the next three, four, five years, you're right. We're celebrating bigger banners, more important banners, Super Bowls, whatever it is, uh, and not just winning the division. But this is the first time the Lions have ever won the NFC North as it's being branded, as it's been branded, the NFC North, when they, of course, realign the divisions. And I'm all for it. So anybody that thinks, oh, this is dumb, or look, the LA Lakers put a different kind of banner up, but they raised a banner last month for winning the in-season tournament and people out in LA. And I know Paul Pierce, uh, who's an LA native and of course played for the Celtics. He was like up in arms about it. How could the great, the lions are nothing, nowhere near the Los Angeles Lakers in terms of championships and history. Okay. Let's take what we can get and celebrate it a little bit. So I am all for it. I think it's cool. And, uh, I'm happy about it. Fine. I'm good with it. Enjoy it. If you're going to the game on Sunday against the Vikings, get there a little early, get in your seat and soak it all in. As Howard Stern once said, let me soak you in. I, I, I think it's, I think it's cool. So I am, uh, I am all for it. As far as Sunday's game, by the way, um, I'm all, I'm also all in on the Lions playing to win. There's this, notion out there and this feeling from some that the Lions should start Teddy Bridgewater at quarterback. The Lions should sit some of their starters. No, uh, -uh. the two seed is important and there's a chance the Lions could be the two seed. Have you watched the Philadelphia Eagles over the last four or five weeks? They've been a train wreck. I know they're 13 point favorites this weekend and everything else. And or not 13 point favorites, five and a half, six point favorites this weekend in New York against the Giants. A game, by the way, you can watch on CBS. Um, the, the Eagles could lose that game. And Dallas, I know Dallas is like a 13-point favorite going to Washington to face Ron Rivera and the Commanders and what could be Ron Rivera's last game as coach there. Um, Ron Rivera said today to the media, I've only been coaching for the last six weeks. The last three and a half years, I've been managing. Okay, great, Ron. Thank you for that. Um, but Dallas struggles away from home. They're not a good road team. They've been, what, three and five on the road this year. You just never know in week 18. All right, look, are the commanders a lot worse than Dallas? Yes. Is the commander's roster pretty much stripped? Yes. Uh, are the Giants bad? Yes. You know, is there an outside, is there a great chance that both Philly and Dallas lose and the Lions get the two seed? No. But I still say you play to win this week. You don't mess with anything. All right, you knock on wood and hope everybody stays healthy, and that'll be one of my keys coming up momentarily. But you play this thing out. Now, if the Lions go up early on Minnesota and the Vikings are cashing in their chips and, and licking the stamp and uh, they've got I-75 eyes, or in this case, I-94 eyes to get back to the airport, um, then you take your starters out. All right, the Lions are up 21-0 in the, in the third quarter. Get Goff and Ragnow and some of these guys out of the game and let's see Teddy Two Gloves and you know, Col Colby Soresdahl. I have no issue with that. Dan Campbell has to be smart about it. But as far as playing his starters to try to get the two seed to get uh, two home playoff games instead of one, I'm all I'm all in. Vegas doesn't think the Lions are going to do that. Um, or Vegas does think the Lions are going to rest people because the spread went from five and a half to three, three and a half in some places, which I think was uh, which I found kind of intriguing. All right, uh, coming up next, an update on injuries. Is Jamison Williams playing this weekend? What about Brock Wright? What about James Houston for the playoffs? All of that coming up right here on Locked on Lions.
All right, everybody. But first, right here, we got to tell you here on Locked On Lions about our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. It's the start of the new year. Every small business owner is asking themselves the same question. What's the one move I can make that'll take my business to the next level in 2024? Well, LinkedIn Jobs knows that your success all depends on the team that you surround yourself with. You want to hire good people. That's why LinkedIn Jobs has created the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster. And guess what? It's free. All right. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. It's a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. I was talking to this young man yesterday, Nick, um, uh, who went to Saginaw Valley. And he said, hey, look, I, po- I, I apply for jobs on LinkedIn and nowhere else. That's the best spot. And he's right. LinkedIn also knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. That's why they can help you. All right. Small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. All right, back on a Friday edition of Locked On Lions. Thanks for making us your first listen and checking us out wherever you get your podcasts. Um, Today, Dan Campbell was asked about injuries, and it all kind of starts with James Houston. Um, We know one weakness that the Lions have is the opposite edge rusher on the other side of Aiden Hutchinson. And there was a thought that Dan Campbell had kind of planted in our minds weeks ago that maybe... James Houston, of course, recorded over eight sacks last year as a rookie and played really well, especially down the stretch, could be back by mid to late December. Well, we're now into January. He's not going to play this week, and he's coming back from a fractured ankle. And when asked about would he be ready for the playoff game next week and what that would mean for a guy like that to have his first game back in like 10 weeks in the playoffs, Dan Campbell kind of shrugged and said, yeah, he's still a ways away. So I would not bet on seeing James Houston this season, the rest of the year. I just, I think the Lions are going to be better safe than sorry here with him coming back from a fractured ankle. Now, as far as Sunday goes, Jamison Williams, ankle injury, out, will not play this weekend. That means we're going to see more of Donovan Peoples-Jones, and I'm assuming Antoine Green, Antoine, Antoine, will be the rookie from North Carolina, will be active for this game. Also, uh, Brock Tober, the Brock party, Brock Wright also out for Sunday. Um, I'm expecting to see Chauncey Gardner Johnson and Jason Cabinda and Aline McNeil this week, which should be cool. Now what's interesting about the, the Gardner Johnson or, or, or Ducey as he likes to be called situation is he has said to the media, he wants to be on the field and on the field a lot. Aaron Glenn made a point, a uh, future head coach, Aaron Glenn and by the way, voted on by the players as the number one coordinator in football. <laughs> Did anybody else see that yesterday? What the hell? What, what is going on in this world? Anyway, I'm not going to get into that. But anyway, Aaron Glenn did say yesterday that Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, Kirby Joseph, Ify Melifonwu are all going to play. And they're going to rotate and they're all going to see action. <laughs> uh, Ducey, as he likes to be known now. Uh, Chauncey Gardner Johnson's like, no, I want to be out there more. I'm not down with that. Now, some of it was said in jest. Dan Campbell made it a point today of saying, look, I like the fact that Ducey wants to be on the field, but the guys are going to be all good with it. We'll rotate everybody in. Everybody's going to see some time. But keep an eye on that. But getting Gardner Johnson back is going to be great for this defense. And like I said the other day, Ali McNeil, same thing. The Lions are a better football team and a much better football team when number 54 is out there uh, in the middle of that of that Detroit de- defensive line. So that'll be a good sign and something to look forward to, certainly, um, when the Lions face the Vikings on Sunday. Um, as far as some other keys to the game, and we'll get to the uh, St. Brown snub and, and all of that in a second. Look, um, Luke Braun was the, is the host of Lockdown Vikings and was on yesterday with us on the crossover. Go back and watch it or listen to it if you missed our crossover Thursday brought to you by Prize Picks. Um, Luke, Luke is kind of done. He's kind of he's kind of ready for this regular season to be over and the season to be over for the Vikings. Of course, Minnesota comes in right now seven and nine. They have a minuscule 
outside chance of getting to the um the playoffs they would need the packers to lose they would need um the rams to lose they they wouldn't well, actually the rams doesn't matter it's packers and bucks and all these things have to happen and they have to win it's a very slim chance um for the vikings to get in green bay holds a tiebreaker over them the rams are already in the playoffs etc so you know I almost said Lloyd Braun, <laughs> Luke Braun for you Seinfeld fans out there. Why can't you be more like Lloyd Braun? Luke Braun said he's kind of done with this team. And the big reason for that is their quarterback play over the last couple of weeks, including week 16 at home against the Lions has just been absolutely atrocious. Now, again, Nick Mullins had had his moments against Detroit. He threw for over 400 yards. He threw a couple of nice, nice passes. Justin Jefferson was over 100 yards. Of course, Osborne had the touchdown. Uh, so Mullins at times got into a groove. He hit Hawkinson a few times before TJ got hurt. But they're going back to Nick Mullins this week after Mullins was benched last week against Green Bay for Jaron Hall. Hall's going to be the number two, and Josh Dobbs is the number three. But a key for me on Sunday for the Lions to get a win over the Vikings is if the defensive backs have their hands on the football because Mullins throws it to you, catch it. A key to the game is the DBs not dropping interceptions because Mullins is going to throw it to you. That's what he does. Three, a pair of interceptions a week before against the Lions, uh, against the Bengals should have been more four interceptions, four against the Lions two weeks ago, benched last week, came in toward the end, um, after Hall was benched, but that's what Nick Mullins does. So remember Brian branch dropping that interception in the end zone. Uh, two weeks ago, Lions have got to catch the football when Mullins throws it to them. Kirby Joseph did it twice. Branch did it. And of course, Ify Malafano did it on that last pass um, a couple of weeks ago. Another key to this game is staying healthy. I know you're playing an unbelievably physical football game and you're going to be hitting people and everything else. If there's anybody in this game that turns an ankle or feels something tweak a little bit, get them out, keep them out. Lions must be healthy for next week when they face the Rams or um, the Packers, most likely, either of those two teams. Outside shot at Minnesota, but you know what I mean. You got to be healthy for this game. Um, so that, I think, is going to be a key to this game as well. And the other thing, too, is penalties early. All right, The Lions are angry. The Lions are pissed off. They're ticked off after what took place last Saturday night in Dallas when they got hosed by the officials. Can't take too much of that aggression in early and be too hyped up that you commit a, a silly personal foul or an, an unnecessary roughness penalty. All right? Stay out of the sin bin, if I can use a hockey term, and just play smart. You can play angry. You can play aggressive. You can be mad about what happened last week, but that doesn't mean personal fouls, cheap shots, uh, extra stuff after the whistle. Don't get involved with that. That's what the Vikings are going to try to sucker you into doing. And I think for the Lions, they've got to just stay out of that mess, just play their game. They're the better football team. Run the ball, use Gibbs, use Montgomery, get Laporta involved again. Uh, St. Brown was terrific a couple of weeks ago against Minnesota. Get him involved again and get out of there with the win. And I would love to see Teddy Bridgewater getting some snaps in the second half and Jared Goff on the sidelines in a, in a ball cap. I think that would be, um, you know, very advantageous for this football team. All right, Amon Ross St. Brown said he was heated the other day. when He found out he did not make the Pro Bowl. I don't blame him. We'll do that coming up next. And Locked On Lions today is sponsored by BetterHelp. If you're thinking about therapy, thinking about talking to somebody, now is the time to do it. Around New Year's, we get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right. Maybe you finally organize one part of your space, you want to tackle another. Maybe you're taking your supplements every morning and now you want to actually eat breakfast too. Therapy helps you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. If you're thinking about starting up therapy, Give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. 
Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge at BetterHelp. That is pretty cool. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. All right, we saw this uh, saw this uh, yesterday, and of course we had the uh, crossover, so we couldn't get to the Pro Bowl snubs. But I said on Wednesday that I thought Wednesday night the Lions were going to get at least four Pro Bowl starters, or at least four Pro Bowlers. And I said Ragnow and Sewell have to go, Laporta, um, Hutchinson, and I also said I'm in Ross St. Brown. I actually said five. I thought five Lions were going to go, including. St. Brown. No, actually, I said four, and I, I wasn't sure about Hutchinson. But regardless, Hutch is in. Jalen Reeves Maven made it as a special teamer, and he is well deserving of that honor. It's awesome. Sam Laporta is the other tight end after George Kittle. Absolutely. And Ragnow and Sewell are both starters, and, and they deserve it. All right. They really do. I know uh, Ragnow is there with uh, Jason Kelsey, Sewell along the offensive line. Um, it's awesome. All right. So those five are in. But But the sun god, Amon Ross St. Brown, snubbed and does not get in. St. Brown has 112 catches for 1,371 yards and nine touchdowns. Who did make it? C.D. Lamb. All right. C.D. Lamb has more catches, more yards. He's the best receiver in the NFC. A.J. Brown, 105 catches, 1,447 yards, seven touchdowns. Two less than St. Brown, more yards, seven less catches. Puka Nakua, the rookie wide receiver for the Rams, gets in. 101 catches, nine, uh, I should say, 11 less than St. Brown, 1,445 yards, few more than St. Brown, five touchdowns, four less. Mike Evans gets in. Amon Ra caught 112 balls. Mike Evans caught 76. Amon Ra's got 1,371 yards. Mike Evans, 1,233. Evans does have 13 touchdowns. St. Brown has nine. Mike Evans' PFF grade is 83.4. St. Brown's is 90. I think this is ridiculous. Now, again, Mike Evans is a good player. Puka Nakua is really good. But you know what? St. Brown is having a better year and is better than both of them. A rookie gets in. Whatever happened to the days when a rookie had to wait his turn? Remember Darius Slay used to get snubbed for the Pro Bowl? Now he gets in all the time. But back in the day, there were times we thought Slay should have made it. Oh, no, but you have to wait your turn. Remember that? Now we got Nakua getting in as a rookie over St. Brown. Mike Evans, who only had 76 catches, all right, 36 less than Amon Ra. Four more touchdowns. And I'm not taking anything away from Mike Evans, but St. Brown has every right to say he was heated the other day. And he and he, and he and he says he was. All right. He could make the Pro Bowler or make the Pro Bowl as a late addition, like he did last year. He's a second alternate or he's a first alternate right now. So he could get in. Now, again, it's not about the game. It's not about these stupid skills competitions that they do. It's not. It's about Wednesday night when they announced it. Because it's great to say the Lions had five Pro Bowlers. The Lions had six Pro Bowlers. The Lions had one. The Lions had nine. Whatever it is. And to me, St. Brown deserves to be on that list. And that is an absolute snub. The other guy I thought was really snubbed was Zaire Franklin, the leading tackler in the AFC and the leading tackler for the Colts. I know the Ravens, both their linebackers, uh, Queen and... uh, Dude who used to play for the Bears, whose name escapes me. Um, oh, my gosh. You know what I'm talking about. Those two guys made it. All right, and I get it. Those are two very good football players. All right, Baltimore's defense is is excellent. Roquan Smith. All right, Roquan and Queen are awesome. But Zaire Franklin should have made it. Um, but I think St. Brown was a massive snub, especially when you got a rookie with arguably equal numbers. Wait your turn. And 
uh, Mike Evans, who just to me is not as good as St. Brown. Mike Evans is really good, but Amon Ra deserves it. So I thought he got snubbed. I thought that was lame. Um, but I'm happy certainly for Ragnow, Sewell, uh, JRM, Sam Laporta. You knew he was going to make it. And uh, Aiden Hutchinson. So five Lions getting in tells you all you need to know about what Brad Holmes has done with this roster. And certainly he inherited some of these people. But still, um, pretty cool. And it just goes to show that the Lions are one of the best teams in the, in the NFL. They are. All right, that'll do it for this Friday edition of Locked On Lions. Thanks for making us your first listen and checking us out wherever you get your podcasts. Please subscribe if you haven't yet on our Locked On Lions YouTube channel. Lions and Vikings coming up on Sunday. I think the Lions are going to win. Um, and then hopefully up early, rest some people, and uh, get ready for a home wild card, a home first round playoff game, which they will announce on Sunday night. Um, haven't heard wor any word on when yet. I told you last week, somebody had told me that the, the league wants one of the four or five matchups to be the Monday night game, but it wouldn't surprise me if they put Rams and Lions on Monday night. You never know if it's, if it in fact is Stafford and the Rams. Um, all right. We will be back for a post game pod Sunday right here on Lockdown Lions. Thanks everybody.